finding out you have cancer, what next? So that will be what we are discussing today as another installment for the Cancer Series. Welcome back to my channel. So if you've seen the other videos in the cancer series, you would know how I found out I had cancer. Their initial plan was, like after my operation, everyone will be there. My mom, Mark, Mark's mom, and all the doctors will be in the room and they would tell me everything that happened during the operation. But that didn't happen because my mom already told me. To me, that was a better situation because it was more intimate and not like, like everyone's there standing around. I was lying in bed and everyone would be standing around me. I, th I thought that was a better way of finding out rather than having a big audience <laughs> watching as I react to the bad, sad news. After confirming that I had cancer, we were thinking of what to do. A lot of people would definitely go straight to, okay, so you're gonna get chemotherapy. But me, I was hesitant at first because, as I mentioned before, my only idea of, of chemotherapy was Breaking Bad. And what I saw from there was terrible. Like, he was feeling down and nauseous and vomiting a lot and all those other terrible things. So I got pretty scared and I, one time I told my mom that I might take the all-natural path, herbal or something like that, and not gonna get chemo anymore. And then she cried to me and told me that my son needs me. So there, that's what really woke me up and made me decide to go the chemotherapy path. So after deciding that I'll be taking chemotherapy, we wanted to shop around and have second, third opinions. It wasn't because of the doctor. It was more of like, okay, let's see what this hospital has to offer, how much a session costs, and all those things. So from my first doctor, the doctors who operated on me at Manila Adventist, they told me that I needed six sessions of chemotherapy. Now we decided to do the other canvassing all in one day. So I went with my mom and my mother-in-law. This was after our wedding, after Christmas, after New Year. So we just really wanted to get over the festivities before getting into the sadness. Because I was diagnosed uh, on the week of December 3, got married December 20, and then Christmas, December 25, New Year, so you know the drill. The first doctor we went to was at St. Luke's Hospital. And I really, honestly, I forgot his name. But it's just so funny because he, it felt like he was a professor educating us about chemotherapy and cancer. And he wasn't really very personal. And at one point, he was selling us his book, so it didn't really sit well with all of us. And then the next one, we met with another doctor at Asian Hospital. Uh, I already mentioned this before. What turned me off was the fact that she had to go on and say, to me, it sounded like, in a blaming tone now. Oh, you didn't have to take out everything. You should have left one ovary. Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, fine. Like, maybe you could have done, or that doctor could have done a better job. But she wasn't there. Okay? Like, theoretically, maybe that could have been a choice, but it wasn't. 
So I don't think she was in any position to say that because it may make some people feel bad or uncomfortable knowing that I was asleep at that time and other people had to make that difficult decision for me. And I fully support that decision no matter what. So sometimes you see, no matter how good a doctor is, but if they don't have a nice set of values or they don't make me, the patient, feel comfortable, all that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. So finally, after going to different doctors, different hospitals, comparing costs, more or less their price range were the same, like around only around 10 to 20,000 peso difference per session. I decided to go with our initial doctor because I felt very comfortable with her. I felt very taken care of. Like, the reason why I'm traumatized to get confined in a hospital is because of one time I got confined before. Like, I was there for almost a week and they didn't really find the cause and heal me properly. Like, I think the pain just went away. But this time, you know, every little thing that happened they were all on it right away, instantly, almost instantly. No matter what day or time it was, like they would do what needed to be done. For example, like I wasn't peeing as much, like they would call the doctor needed for that, and then I'm feeling some kind of pain here, okay, she will need that medicine, and then after a while, my doctor, my ob would come after a while. My oncologist would come after a while. Like, you know, they were really taking care of me. So, uh, this was really a no-brainer. Like, I really had to go with them. I already mentioned the herbal or natural approach to dealing with cancer earlier. So, why didn't I consider giving it a chance? Simply because all the doctors we talked to and even some of my friends who are doctors I asked them about that is this true is this effective like I showed them some forms of alternative medicine for cancer and there's one common thing they said if that truly worked if it had medical backing or evidence that it truly works we would definitely ditch chemo for that. Like, what doctor would want to give chemo to a patient? Because it's really a difficult experience, not just for the patient, the patient's body, the patient's immune system, but for everyone around her. Like, her family, her friends, even the doctors. Because from all the stories I've heard of, different chemo meds have different effects, side effects to each person. So there are no, really no guarantees. So if all those alternative medicine for cancer were 100% effective, I would have given it a chance. But I don't want to gamble on that. <laughs> it's my life. so. I'd rather go for something that's proven and safe. It wasn't just a doctors we decided to have second opinions from, but also people we know who went through chemotherapy. So a friend of ours said that chemo is your best friend. So after hearing that, I started preparing myself with that statement that chemo is my best friend. And in spite of the different experiences with chemotherapy, one thing was common amongst all the people I knew at that time who underwent chemotherapy. They were all alive and well. So what better proof is that that it works? It works 
it will get me healthy again it will take out all the cancer it will heal me so that's what's important right so what tips can I give you if you just found out you had cancer I think you you need to know what you can handle physically physically financially and emotionally before deciding on which path to take because uh, I've also heard about stories of people changing their lifestyle and diet and all those other things and without chemotherapy got well so I think it really depends on the person and a person's beliefs in this day and age there's a lot of things you can google or find on the internet but please 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 be advised to know if those articles or things you see on the internet are reliable if you can trust them like if you're willing to risk your life on that then just do, just it. do it but i personally went for chemotherapy because i believe in facts and years and years of study and research by pharma companies doctors scientists and all those things so it's really up to you and i am very well aware that not everyone can physically handle chemotherapy like i'm just so lucky to be healthy enough that my body was able to handle it so it really really depends on you okay so that's all for today and i hope this helps you on your cancer journey and i'll see you again next time for more cancer and chemo tips do subscribe to my channel hit the notifications bell icon to know whenever i upload new videos i upload five days a week see you again soon bye